I um, I'll agree with you a little bit. I do feel as though it's a little bit contradictory to be hyping myself up for legs and then walk into a Planet Fitness. I'll, I'm not going to lie to you. It's a sweet gym, good equipment, more than enough for me to get a good workout in. But when it comes to subjective vibe, it doesn't necessarily kick my uh, kick my engines into overdrive. But even if it had the vibe of a retirement home, do you really think that's going to interrupt me getting a nice and veiny leg pump? Rhetorical question, of course. So hamstring, same as normal. Hamstring curls, probably pretty heavy. Laying, seated. Uh, actually, maybe, no, yeah, I'm not just going to jump straight into heavy. Because what will happen for me is these hamstring machines, the, the laying one especially, the seated one just a little, the stacks are a little bit too light. So maybe I'll do some single leg squeezing sets first. Or maybe some alternating sets. Kind of, like, th they'll still be good working sets, but they'll also serve the purpose of pre-exhausting me. So, you know, by the time I do two or three single leg squeezing sets, then once I try to do the whole stack, the weight is going to feel a bit heavier. You know, I definitely like the idea of pre-exhaustion before moving on to, like, kind of a compound pressing movement. Because it sounds cool, you know, your muscle doesn't know how heavy the weight is. It only knows how heavy it feels. That's cool logic. Or, it sounds cool. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you're still not lifting that much weight. So, I like the idea of that. I do kind of implement it a little bit. But I'm not exactly sure that it's going to replace a fresh, heavy set. You know? Like... I think the dude who can curl the 50s for 10, this might just be my opinion, maybe not backed up by any kind of facts or whatever, but I think he might get a little more gains than the dude who's doing uh, pre-exhausted sets and then curling the 35s for 10, even though it feels like the 50s, if you kind of catch my drift. But that's not a blanket statement. You know, train hard in all sorts of ways, and as long as you actually are training hard, Getting good sets in, you're getting pumped. All right, that sounds like progress to me. So hamstrings, and you know, we'll see what's open. We'll see what we want to do. I never have a problem getting a good hamstring pump, and knock on wood a little bit, but my hamstrings have been fucking bulletproof. It's like they're made of steel. I have not pulled a hamstring in uh, like a whole year, even going really heavy on hamstring curls. Now, do I attribute that to just superhuman strength? Not necessarily. I'd say if I had to blame anything, I would say it's because I've been warming up much more diligently. As time has passed, as I've gotten more and more experienced, I am, uh, I've put a lot more emphasis on warming up before getting into my real working sets to the point where, like, I don't want to just do a few little stretches and then jump straight into you know, the first working set or weight or whatever. Like, I like a slow ease into it. And these warm-up sets, not that I think anybody thinks warm-up sets count as working sets, but they do not count towards overall workload. At least I don't consider it. You know, If I'm about to do, let's just say hamstrings for simplicity, before I even do any kind of hamstrings, I'm going to do a couple of... Uh, calf activation sets not even with a machine or anything just like hold on to the machine curl stand on one leg just get a little bit of calf raises in because if i don't warm up my calves pre hamstrings sometimes the back of my knee can get a little tense just uh just a little bit uncomfortable so when i do a couple calf raises beforehand that's pretty much mitigated that i haven't felt that kind of uncomfortability for many months for many moons and then light sets of let's say i'm about to start laying curls so i'm going to do you know whatever a light weight is be it half the stack quarter stack 
whatever. You know, maybe five, six reps, squeeze it hard, but obviously a weight that's pretty light. Then sit down for a few minutes. Or, no, 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 not a few minutes. Maybe a minute, max. And then a little heavier. A little heavier, a little heavier, a little heavier. Until I get to a weight that I'd say is comfortable for a working set, whatever that ends up being. And then that first working set, that's what actually counts in the lift. So that whole process of doing all those warm-ups, even if I did like 10 reps in the warm-up sets, they're still just well, a warm-up, you know? So one, uh, it's been a while since I brought this up. I guess I don't really see it too often, but when you move from movement to movement, I think, I mean, I guess this depends on your comfortability, but try not to do too much fluff work in between. You know, after I do a couple of good sets on the laying hamstring curl, unless I've never used the seated hamstring curl before, then I'm just going to jump straight into my working weight. I'm hitting the same muscle groups. And since they're already warm from doing the laying hamstring curl, why would I need to do any more warm-up weights? Any more warm-up reps? Right? I'm just going to jump straight into the working set. So, I guess what I'm really trying to say there is just try to minimize fluff. But quads will be however quads will be. Leg extensions, guaranteed. Sissy squats, more than likely. Uh, Smith machine squats to be determined. Machine leg press, potentially a little superset with leg extensions, also to be determined. So, really I'll just have to see. I gotta get through hamstrings first before I even really think about quads. You know, I don't wanna try to be thinking about two things at once, it's just gonna distract me. So, hamstrings, quads, little adductors at the end, after the pump check, you know, we can jump straight back here in the car, and ideally I'm gonna have to move this steering wheel up a few notches because my legs won't be able to fit underneath it. So let's uh, let's just hope it's not too busy and get started. Now after a little bit of calf warm-ups and gradually progressing in weight, um, what the machine says is 90 pounds, single leg ought to be perfect. So with these I'm not gonna be insanely brutish. Like if you've seen me do laying leg curls before, you know it looks pretty like just just wrenching the weight around. I'll be a little more meticulous. Make sure I kind of hold each rep at the top for at least a moment, at least for the first few that I'm strong. For now, the couple partials, then switch legs. So I think maybe two or three of these, and then I might move over to the, uh, the seated hamstring curl and really do some kind of heavy sets. Let's just repeat that a few times. One more. I right, can't really help getting a little repetitive with these angles, but 
here's something I kind of, I'm not even, I don't even think this is a tip. I'm just kind of making an observation, but I find hamstring training to be pretty easy for me just because it's not very taxing for me to do hamstrings to failure. Like for me to do squats to failure or anybody to do squats for failure to failure. I mean, sure quads are killed, but you're just a step. I'm fumbling my words just a touch, but you're systemically fatigued afterwards, right? You got to catch your breath. But after these sets of hamstring curls, I mean, sure, my hamstrings are on fire and I'm kind of huffing and puffing a little bit, but it's a very efficient movement if you kind of catch my drift. So I almost feel like I'm, I don't want to say I want to only do isolation movements, but I do like potentially kind of leaning towards efficient movements like these, you know, like that's why I don't do deadlifts. If I were to do a set of deadlifts, you know, as heavy as I could go for 10, weight wise, I don't know what that would be. I don't deadlift, but sure. I mean, my traps would probably get some work, lats, lower back erectors, but my whole body would be fucking, you know, blown apart. Not in a bad way. I just mean I'd be huffing and puffing. So I'd rather do pull downs or rows where the only muscle that I'm targeting or the only muscle that I'm hitting is the one that I'm targeting, right? When I'm doing these, nothing else is coming into play. So I get to focus all my energy and attention just on each of my hamstrings. So that's not really, whatever. Let's just do another one. That's enough here. Let's move on to laying hamstring. I mean, uh, what am I talking about? Seated hamstring curls. This is not my favorite hamstring curl. Seated, I kind of like, um, I don't know what it's called. I swear, I don't know what half these machines brands are called. I just know what they look like. But this is pretty good. And what I like about this hamstring curl is it's, for whatever reason, close enough to matching my anatomy with my leg length and my shin length you know make sure you get your pad at the right distance but i'm comfortable enough with the machine where i can really load a lot of weight you know like with some dip machines or some row machines or chest machines it's just a little bit too funky like maybe i'd rather have the handles be a little lower and for them to be up here it kind of hurts my shoulders so you know kind of keep that in mind if you really want to wrench some weight around Make sure the machine kind of jives with your build. Because if this machine was like a little out of whack, or maybe my knees had to be a bit further forward or something, and I really tried just loading up too much weight, I could see hurting myself. But it feels good, fits me. So let's just throw the stack around. And this is, uh, this is gonna be a set way different than the ones I was doing over there. These reps are just back to back, burn out until they can't move. Okay. 
One more. Same shit that I just did the last two sets, but this time I'm gonna give it a little bit of added intensity by way of a uh, rest pause. So, you know, I'll do my normal set failure, whatever, kick my legs back down, sit for like, eh, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 seconds, if that, then try to get a couple more. If I feel like doing a double rest pause, I will, but I think after one, I'll probably be good. Okay. Okay. That's enough. Hamstrings complete. A big green circle around them. Dunzo. So let's grab a leg extension and get comfortable and start the real hard part of this lift. Uh, old faithful. I said it before, and at least as of now, I'm gonna say it again. Leg extensions are my personal bread and butter of quads. And that may not necessarily be because <coughs> it's what's gonna grow my quads the best. I think I just have an underlying bias because I like the way it feels and I like the pump I get from it. So do not think this is absolute uh, <coughs> perfect training style. Really, I should be doing some more heavy pressing but I'm kind of chilling heavy pressing wise for now because the my right quad is just a little funky, just a touch. I'd prefer maybe two sets of here and then heavy squats, hacks, and then maybe coming back. But for now, I'm gonna do the best I can leg extension style. So set or two here, honestly maybe three, and then there's gonna be some kind of pressing, either Smith machine squats or Machine leg press, maybe single leg, maybe superset. I'd, I just got to get through these first couple good leg extensions first. That's uh, that's what I'm putting my mental energy and focus into. So, left quad's a little bit behind the game compared to the right one. So I'm going to start with the left one and match the reps. <sighs> Yeah. <sighs> 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 Yeah, the last few reps on that right leg were much easier than the left. That's a little imbalance that I have to deal with. But I feel a little heavier. Okay. 
one notch heavier. Let's sit here for a while. I think I want to do a lot of volume today. Reasons? Maybe I'll talk about it later. I don't know. It's just a feeling. So one thing I think I'll say, I have zero problem with the fucking leg extension marathon. You know, I feel like I'm getting a little technical every time I'm talking about like, oh, okay, uh, I feel like I've done six sets. That's as much volume as I need. I'm, I can leave now. Bah, 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 bah. I mean, even when I say that kind of stuff, it feels a little mumbo jumbo-ish. Like I should be wearing a lab coat reading off a fucking piece of cardboard. Or a, um, ah, what are those called? Clipboard. There we go, yeah. Right. So, even though I do kind of go down little rabbit holes of like, okay, I, I want to try it like this with some rest pause sets and maybe a superset and like some squeezing reps and this and that and what it, I think it's in a way, if you take that too far, it sort of detracts from the purity of what you should be focusing on. You know, pick a couple of basic movements. Everybody gets the gist. What do you do to work your chest? Bench, pressing, pec flies. What do you do for legs? Maybe some squats, maybe leg extensions, hamstring curls, right? We all know the basics. So, you know, just do what we know fucking works and go as hard as you can. You know, the guy who's doing a lift where maybe he does only two fucking movements per body part, his chest day is only incline bench and pec deck. His back day is only cable rows and pull downs. His leg day is only leg extensions and hamstring curls. His arm day is only alternating dumbbell curls and straight bar pushdowns. If he goes at those sets like a total fucking freak, he's going to beat the guy doing maybe not even half, let's say 75% his intensity with like a fancy pants program, three sets of chest press, three sets of pause rep, you know? Like I'm not saying there's no value in that. All the like science-based lifter, the whole demographic there, really getting into the studies and everything else. That is legit. I like that that exists. It's good for training all around, right? We're actually kind of honing in on some stuff that actually works. But a lot of the time, if you listen to these guys, all that they're doing, and I'm not, I'm not trying to rip on them, but a lot of the times when they talk about stuff, it ends up being like, well, I guess the old school guys were right. You know, when they did this and that and the other, they were actually, and then they brushed out a whole scientific explanation. So even though some of this stuff hasn't been perfectly scientifically studied, we know the basics. The harder you go, the more food you eat, the bigger you'll be able to get in its most basic sense. So I mean, I'm actually getting a little bit riled up by saying this. Let me, let me play some kind of song and go hard. A few more. Oh yeah. A little lighter. That might be pushing it. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Uh. Let's do some double leg sets next. In a way, I kind of did quads the same way I did hamstrings. Single leg sets first, and now my quads are pre exhausted enough where the whole stack is enough weight for a legit set. So, <laughs> I'm thinking this one, the next one, probably just the same style as the ones I've been doing. Throw the shit around until you're barely doing any partials. I mean, look, if I were to sit here and make the sort of constraint on the set as just go as hard until I can't do one more complete rep, it'd still be a good set. I mean, you know, the reps would slow down. I'd really have to fight to get up here. But for whatever reason, actually not whatever reason, for the reason of the fact that I just get a crazier pump doing little partials at the end after burning out, well, that's what I'm going to do. But if your prerogative is to make every set have perfect reps, look, sure, that's sick, man. I, I get kind of loose with my form, but that's just because it's what I like, right? You got to do whatever the fuck you want. But if that's your prerogative, then as long as you're going hard, dude, sweet. You know, don't overthink it. But let's, uh, let's just clear my mind of any cohesive thoughts and get crazy. I, I want to keep going. I'm not sure what I want to do next, though. Honestly, I probably wouldn't mind sitting here for like two or three more. But I think I want to get something pressing done. I think I'm going to go see how Smith Machine squats feel. Obviously not heavy, but just as a bit of a pressing movement instead of leg extensions. Because sure, in its most basic sense, they are both hitting quads. But... Do not get me wrong, even though I love leg extensions, it's a very different stimulus than real leg pressing. So let's go see how that feels over there. Okay, I'm already in the zone. Let's just discuss the set after. I'm, I can guarantee you heard that on that third rep. That's just part of the game. But I think 
that's it. Let's go check the pump and be done. I felt like I was just teetering on the point of starting to tweak my quad again. Like that was a weight I can handle, but I think that's enough. And how many sets was that? Like seven? I like it. So let's go check the pump. Oh my goodness. Okay. Exposure down. One full stop. Actually, let's make it 1.3. Let's get crazy with it. So, honestly, I kind of lost a little bit of quad pump with that last set of squats because it took me a minute to get warmed up. And then, you know, I don't know, like peak pump on quads was after like set number six or so of those leg extensions. And dude, they felt fucking swollen. This was for sure my best quad pump as of late with the no doubts, no ifs, ands, or buts. Well, I guess one but, but it did not come into play because I do not do any uh, direct glute work. But let's see how we're looking. So not done. I'm still going to go do adductors, these little inner muscles, whatever. But just overall, I'm certainly not dissatisfied. So let's just run through one or two and then get out of here. Four. Perfect. Okay. I can stand behind that leg day with my chest high. That was a good one. Hamstrings. I have no problem doing a good hamstring workout. Hamstrings is almost always perfect for me. Quads is where I really get put to the test in terms of my preparation as well as my performance. You know, if I'm well rested and well fed, there's nothing stopping me from having a good leg day quad wise. But, you know, let's say I slice off a little bit of sleep, playing a little too much Fortnite, playing a little too much whatever then quads, I am going to feel it. I'd say it's probably just because quads is such a big muscle. Like, compared to everything else, if I absolutely obliterate, you know, X muscle, quads is the one that I'm going to feel the hardest in my whole system, just fatigue-wise. And I mean, yeah, it's just the fucking biggest muscle in your frame. So, in that sense, I'd say I put the most emphasis on preparation before my leg day, right? Now, I probably should do an even amount on every day, of course, but I'm just kind of making an observation. I can go in on, on a chest day or an arm day with maybe not the best sleep, and the pump won't suffer too much. Obviously, I should be getting more sleep, way more optimal. I'm not just saying that that's okay, right? I want to get better rest and recovery for every lift. But legs, the day before legs, I feel like I'm the most responsible. I'm like, okay. Let's make sure I let's make sure I'm very well hydrated. Let's make sure I get to bed on time. Let's make sure I get some good night's rest and I can get in the zone when I actually start pumping the weights around. And then, assuming all those factors were met, when I go in, even if it's a planet fitness, even if it's whatever, even if all I had was like a home gym, you know, plate loaded leg extension and hamstring curl, I would still have a fucking badass leg day. So those sets of squats at the end, uh, I probably could have done one or two more sets, but I sort of want to ease into pressing. Um, I have a bit of a habit, not that bad, but I definitely do notice sometimes I can get a little bit jumpy about getting back into heavy weight. Like if I haven't squatted for a while, um, which you know I haven't really squatted for a while, if I feel strong, my mind is like more plates. Four, do four, go for five, you could do it. Which, sure, maybe I could do it, but I think the likelihood of me pulling something, uh, it's just gonna increase, you know, even if it's not my quads. Like for me to jump onto that uh, Smith machine and maybe try to do a four and a half plate squat set, or maybe even five, I probably won't get so many reps, but whatever. Quads, I'd be all right. But all the other stabilizing muscles and secondary shit going on, that hasn't really been worked in a little while, 
I'd say those are what are really prone for me to, you know, fuck up. I've, uh, if you've watched these leg days for a while, you know, my right adductor has kind of been a little bit of a point of concern for me. Um, because I'll squat really heavy and then I'll kind of tweak it a little and then I'll take a little break and come back and squat too heavy again and pull it again. I'm not talking like hospital level pull, just like, you know, it'll be painful enough for me to say, I probably should not be doing this, right? And the better, you know, the more enlightened of a lifter you become, the more sensitive you'll get to those little underlying feelings that you feel when you're doing something. You know, the real enlightened lifter, if he knows maybe he went too heavy, well, actually, I guess the real enlightened lifter never goes too heavy. He always does the perfect weight. But, you know, whatever. That's a fantasy world, right? The real smart lifter can tell, oh, Ooh, like not even doing a real working set, just doing his warm-up before a real working set for chess. He's like, oh, okay, that feels a little weird. Even if it's just slight, you know, very slight. He's like, okay, that feels a little funky. And then he's going to adjust accordingly. Maybe he's not going to go for four plates on the inclined Smith machine. Maybe he's going to switch to a hammer strength press, a bit lighter weight, focus on squeezing, you know, that sort of thing. So... As you progress, and I'm not talking about you specifically, I guess I'm just talking about all lifters everywhere, whatever, right? You should get better at pushing yourself, right? The act of pushing yourself to failure, of enduring a hard set and really exerting yourself, that's a skill. That's something that you're going to improve as you do it more and more often, right? If I were to take a, you know, totally new lifter and then a dude who's been lifting for about a month, and let's say they're both at legitimately the exact same strength level. Both of them have the exact same size, you know, fiber level, whatever. Both of them have the exact same strength. One guy has lifted for a month, done hard sets. The other guy hasn't. That dude who's been lifting for a while, since he's used to exerting himself, right, he'll be able to get probably 15 reps on a certain amount of weight on bench. Whereas the guy who's never done it before, you know, maybe he gets six or seven and he has to tap out and not just because he physically can't do another one but just in his mind he's like oh it's starting to burn uh, it's too hard eh, I rack it you know and I'm not necessarily making fun of that guy he's a beginner right it's, you got to get into it somehow my early on sets are probably not as intense as the ones I can do now and I'm not talking about the weight obviously I can do more weight now but like the real subjective exertion level I'm much better at it. So as you get better at that, in tandem, you should also improve your ability to kind of gauge your, maybe, what do I want to say here? Strength potential, injury potential, right? Those two things should increase in tandem, right? Obviously, the harder you're going, the stronger caliber shit you're dealing with, you got to employ more safety protocols to make sure nobody gets hurt. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, as if you're really pushing it, if you're right up against the limit of you know, as much as you can do for a squat set of eight, as much as you can do for an incline set of bench for 10, and you're really at your limit, and it's a weight where if you fuck it up, there's going to be legit consequences if you don't have the proper safety equipment, then... I'm just trying to say, you got to make sure you get a level head, you know everything feels good, and if something's a little off, if something's just a little off, and it's giving you a little bit of the heebie-jeebies, it is never going to hurt you to say, let me back off a little, <laughs> let me back off a little, right? That's, um, so I guess another thing, there's three things that should improve in tandem over time. Your ability to exert yourself, your ability to kind of gauge your danger level, right? If I've pulled my pack a little bit, and it's only been two weeks since I did it, and let's say it was just a moderate pull, you know, nothing crazy, but I do need a little time off to let it sort of tie itself back together, you know. If it's only been two weeks, I'm like, oh, I feel super, I feel pretty strong. Let's go for four plates. <clears throat> Not ideal. Not freaking ideal. And in my mind, that third thing that you got to improve upon is your ability to check your ego because you can get you can sort of get into a I almost want to call this the opposite 
of a flow state where let's say you got high, you're the day of, let's say you got chest, you're excited for incline bench. You're excited for your top set of incline. You're like, okay, I'm going for it. PR day, 315 for eight or whatever. Whatever your max rep is for, max weight is for eight reps. And then as you get into the warm up, maybe something is just a little off. Your shoulder feels a little funky. Maybe your elbow is kind of just a little twinge in you or your chest feels just a little too tight. You know, as you're warming up, if you can't sort of check yourself and say, okay, I, let's chill out a little. And you're like, oh, oh, fuck it, whatever, let's just do it. This phrase, I would say, has a low probability of ending in, wow, that was awesome. Right? So this is the phrase I'm talking about. Yeah, fuck it. Let's just do it. Whoa. Yeah, kind of freaky, man. Right? We're all here to go crazy hard. I think, you know, when I say that, I'm not joking. But if it results in you getting fucked up to the point that you can't go crazy hard in the future, then what's the point, you know? Come on. There's a, there's a way to do this stuff reasonably responsibly. And it's up to you to hold yourself to whatever that responsibility level is for uh, your own specific situation. But, uh, well, man, we went off on a whole kind of ramp, not even talking about legs. So next leg day, assuming everything's in order, because uh, I feel good today. I didn't feel like I kind of re-pulled my right quad a little bit. Because that's not, it's like real deep. It's a real deep sort of kind of, maybe even just a, a slightly sharp soreness I'm feeling. But assuming everything's in order, you know, nice and well rested, next leg day, probably get a little bit heavier squats going. Plus, obviously same level intensity leg extensions. Maybe add some more special whatever. You know, who's to say? But I definitely like that leg day more than any that I've done in probably the last two weeks which would make sense this is the one that I could go the hardest on it's um I mean I, mean, uh, I guess it's obviously not a one-to-one -one because I'm just one dude but right, the last four leg days for quads I've had to go easy because I wanted some quad activation just to you know make sure everything everything's moving around the oil is pumping but I couldn't really push it as hard as I wanted to because I was in a little bit of a uh, compromised state. But regardless of that, the last couple quad sessions have been kind of mellow. I'm just doing light squeezing sets, nothing crazy, right? Kind of holding myself back. And as a result of that, obviously I haven't been getting crazy pumps. Or, well, I've been getting pumps, but the lift wasn't that nuts. Like today was fucking sick. When I went to sit down on the bench, in between my little warm-up sets for those Smith Machine squats, I almost felt like I had to manually use my hamstrings to pull my legs down into a bent seated position because my quads were so pumped up and tight that they didn't want to bend. You know, that's the sort of thing that I want to feel every quad day, which as long as I keep myself from, you know, re-tweaking anything like a total chump, then I see no reason why I won't be able to. So tomorrow's cardio in the morning, chest in the evening, and then a shit ton of food throughout the day. I don't know if you picked up on this, but post-cardio was, um, let's just call it a high-calorie meal from a well-established five-star restaurant. But calories are calories, man. You know, I'll, uh, I'll say this. If nothing else works and you really cannot gain weight, throw some treats in the mix. Throw some treats in the mix. Not saying it's the absolute best case scenario. I would not say that. But, hey man, calories are calories, dude. Do your cardio. Actually, I'm serious. You better be doing your cardio. I know you're not going to do it, but whatever. So, home, food, sleep, repeat. Another perfect day as a lifter. So I will see you next time.